I was travelling on the bus and saw this emergency window breaker. I thought that this would make an excellent example to a very common question. We have an existing object on hand. How do you create a design around this object? In this case specifically, how do you create a mount that closely follows the shape of the hammer? As a first step, I would always encourage users to model out the object of interest, which is the hammer in this case. I find that this facilitates the thinking process and reduces mistakes. You would only need to model the features that affect the mount and not every single detail. I will leave a link below for you to download the file for the hammer. In this file, I have modeled the hammer as a component. We will be creating the mount as another component. You will notice that I have not created the offset for the hammer tip yet. There is also no slot on the handle. Both these features will be done later. The reason is that we need to use the overall shape of the hammer to create the overall shape of the mount first. Before we start, I will encourage you to go to Preferences. Under General, Design, Uncheck Active Component Visibility. This will make all components visible regardless of which component is active. I find this easier to work with, but of course, this is a personal preference. Before performing any action, it is important to be mindful of which components you want to work on and activate that component. Let's activate the hammer. Create a sketch on the front plane. Draw a line slightly above the handle. We will be using this line to split the body. This will split out the critical portion of the hammer, making it easier to work with. Also, this will define the lower edge of the mount. Go to Modify, Split Body. Select the hammer as the body to split. For splitting tool, click on the select box and select the sketch line. We can hide the lower body for now. Let's create a new component for the mount. Before that, we will want to activate the top level so that the new component falls under the top level. Go to Create, New Component. We will be creating an internal component. Rename the component. With the mount component active, create a sketch on the front plane. The mount closely follows the contour of the hammer. We need to generate an outline of the hammer. Go to Create, Project Include, Intersect. For Selection Filter, set to Bodies. Select the hammer body and confirm. These projected lines are a result of the intersection between the body and the sketch plane. The important point here to take note is that we have created this sketch within the mount by borrowing geometry from the hammer, which is a separate component. This is an important concept for working within an assembly. I'm going to delete the bottom edge since I do not want to offset this line. Go to Modify, Offset. With Chain Selection option checked, select the whole chain of projected lines and adjust the offset. Double-click to select the whole chain of projected lines and change them to construction. Let's close up the profile with a line and confirm the sketch. Begin the extrude command and extrude this profile towards the back. This will be extruded as a new body. Let's turn on visibility of the hammer. Go to Inspect and toggle on Component Color Cycling. This will assign each component a color. You can change this color by right-clicking on the component in the browser and cycle Component Color. 
Let's activate the top level and briefly take a look at the timeline. The color labels here matches with the corresponding entities in the browser. When we activate the top level, we see all steps. The first step is the creation of the hammer component at the top level, followed by the steps performed to model the hammer. Next, we have the creation of the mount, followed by the steps performed to model the mount. When we activate a specific component, for example the hammer, we see only the steps that are involved in creating the hammer. This is one of the advantages of working in a multi-component environment as compared to a multi-body environment. It allows us to have a cleaner timeline that is easier to work with. Let's perform an offset for the tip of the hammer. Since we are modifying the hammer, make sure that it is active. Sketch a line on the front plane. As you draw the line, hover over this tangent edge. Fusion would infer that you are trying to take reference of this line. Adjust the line until you will see the parallel constraints appear. Go to Modify, Split Face. Select the cylindrical face to split. For splitting tool, click on the select box and select the sketch line. Go to Modify, Offset Face. Select these two faces and adjust the offset. Next, perform a slot sketch on this face. Use this sketch to perform an extruded cut through all. Now, obviously the hammer overlaps with the mount in its current state. We will use the hammer as a tool to cut into the mount. Again, be mindful of what components we are modifying. We are modifying the mount in this case, so proceed to activate the mount. Go to Modify, Combine. Select the mount body as the target body. For cutting tool, select the hammer body. Again, I want to highlight the fact that we are using bodies from two different components within the same operation. So this highlights the flexibility of working within an assembly. Set the operation to cut. Since we need to keep the hammer after the operation, select the Keep Tools option. Let's hide the hammer to take a look at the cut created. We will need to create a clearance between the hammer and the mount. Go to Modify, Offset Face, and select the faces to offset. I will also select the side walls of this protrusion, but not this face. This face will serve as the resting face when we mount the hammer. Adjust the offset value. We can bring back the hammer to check the clearances. This protrusion is going to serve as a locator when we mount the hammer, and we want to make it more pronounced. Begin the extrude command, 
and select the face of the protrusion. We want to take reference from the handle face. For extent type, choose two object and select the handle face. Set an offset distance. If we ever need to adjust the thickness of the handle, this extrude will adjust accordingly. Next, we need to create a half dome. Start a sketch on this face. Project this arc. Create an offset. And close out the profile with a line. This line will also serve as the axis for revolving. Begin the revolve command. Select the profile and the axis. Change the type to angle and set a 90 degree angle. Set the operation to join. From here, you can go on to create holes for mounting. I'm going to give a brief overview of another two possible ways that you might want to consider. Let's rewind to the point where we just created the mount component. At this point, the component is completely empty. Activate the component. Activate the surface tab. And go to Create Offset. Box select all the faces of the hammer. Adjust the offset according to the clearance you need. Essentially, we have created a skin around the hammer. Go to Modify, Split Body. Select the surface body to split. For splitting tool, we will use a front plane. Remove the unwanted portion. Go to Create, Thicken. Select the surface body from the body's folder and adjust the thickness. This is one way of creating a shell of sorts without having to do any sketches. You will need to find a way to create flat spots for mounting. Speaking of shell, you can also consider using a shell command. Returning to the point where the mount component was first created, if we attempt to create a shell directly on the hammer body, we will lose the original body. There is no option to keep the original body in the shell command. We need to create a copy of the hammer body within the mount component. So activate the mount. Instead of using copy and paste, let's use the boundary fill command as it is more flexible to changes. For tools, select the hammer body. Since there are no overlapping volumes, the only possible cell that can be created is within the skin of the hammer body, so to speak. Click on the select box and select the only checkbox. Make sure to leave the remove tools option unchecked as we still need the original hammer body. This results in a copy. We now have two bodies overlapping each other. Let's hide the original hammer. Go to modify, show. Select the body from the body's folder. For direction, set to outside. Adjust the thickness of the shell.
This creates an outer shell of material that surrounds the original hammer body. From here, we can split the shell into half. And introduce offsets to create clearances.